How we repeat the same mistakes in love over and over. The great challenge of grasping the complexity of human nature make it simply comprehensible. And if you know my work, I haven't always succeeded in doing that. So I've come up with a few graphs that can help me grasp it more simply in a visual way so that I can relate it to you better. Now it begins with, we make mistakes. Everyone who does that, we occasionally behave badly. And that stirs memory of other mistakes we've made. That's uh, uh, whenever you make a mistake, your brain will access similar mistakes, sometimes not all that similar, just other mistakes. And that creates more guilt and shame. So you've got the guilt or shame that comes with the original mistake and then the guilt and shame of past mistakes. And all of that diminishes self-value, temporarily at least. Now, if we cope with that guilt and shame with blame or try to deny it or try to avoid it, and we avoid it with alcohol, drugs, uh, workaholism, gaming, there's lots of ways to try to avoid guilt and shame. We're bound to repeat the mistake. Almost certainly we'll repeat it. If we cope with the guilt and shame that comes from mistakes or bad behavior, through blame, denial, or avoidance. Now, what we want to get to is when we make a mistake, the memory's still going to be of other mistakes, but we're going to practice, instead of blaming, denying, avoiding, improve, appreciate, connect, and protect then the brain will load into implicit memory other times we've improved, appreciated, connected, or protected. And that will lead to better behavior and increased self-value. So the, the point of, of a, a therapeutic improvement is to practice when those memories of other mistakes occur, what we will do in the future to improve, appreciate, connect, and protect. Uh, it might sound strange, but memory of the mistakes are not about the past. They're about the present and the future to help you negotiate your environment. And it's the habit of blame, denial, and avoidance that keeps us from uh, improving and makes us make those same mistakes over and over. Now, core value under stress. I'm not going to go into core value here because I've done in a lot of other posts and there's also a free core value course on our website, compassionpower.com. Now the difficulty of core value is that it's hard to access when we most need it, when hurt, vulnerable, or under stress. It's hard because of habits habits of coping with hurt and vulnerability through blame, denial, and avoidance. Those are the toddler defenses. When toddlers feel bad or when you ask them if they might have done something wrong, they will blame, say, I don't know, or they'll hide avoidance. Blame, denial, and avoidance in adults cause resentment because they make you feel powerless. Somebody else is controlling how you feel. Resentment raises frequency of anger. So almost all anger problems when the anger makes you act against your best interest or keeps you from doing what's in your best interest, almost all of that is, arises from a bed of resentment. The resentment's pretty steady. The anger is like a wave that flares up of a when the tide is high. Blame, denial, avoidance, and resentment block core value and lower self-value. It's hard to like yourself when you're blaming, denying, avoiding, or resentful. So this is what it looks like. Core value is small, and when it is small, vulnerability is greater, and that's when you're likely to cope with it with blame, denial, avoidance, creating resentment. 
The problem is the more that you cope with it that way, the greater the vulnerability becomes. When you have a defense, your brain thinks that it needs it and it gets very narrow and rigid. It won't see any other alternative but blame, denial, and avoidance. And you get more and more cut off from core value. Life begins to lose meaning. You go through the motions or you're angry all the time. What we want to get to is expanding core value, which will reduce vulnerability. And our self-value will grow as we improve, appreciate, connect, improve, appreciate, connect, protect, protect, protect. Now to get there, we have to admit that in relationships, we're all hurt and vulnerable. Don't try to hide it. We all have it. You don't have to wallow in it, but you have to admit to yourself when you're hurt or when you're feeling vulnerable. If you don't admit it, then you can't correct it. We all blame, deny, and avoid. It's habitual. We Try, we can't really try to do better if we don't recognize that we have habits of blaming, denying, and avoiding. We all have resentment. We all perceive ourselves to be inadequate and unlovable to some extent. And that's not really a bad thing. The, the feelings of, of being unlovable or inadequate actually prevent you from becoming unlovable and inadequate. You won't do things that'll make you unlovable, like hurting the people you love. And we all experience guilt and shame. The only way to change a conditioned habit is to recondition a new one. The guilt, shame, blame, resent habit must become a signal to yield, improve, appreciate, connect, or protect. And the way you do that is each time you've experienced guilt, shame, or you tried to blame or felt resentment, you have to practice under those same circumstances and those same physiological and mental states, practice future improvement, appreciation, connection, or protection. Because it involves so much repetition, reconditioning can be tedious. So it must be motivated by a genuine desire to be a better person, partner, and parent. And that way it becomes like training for a sport. The actual practice is tedious, painful even, but you do it to be a better player, a better runner, whatever it is, you're practicing, you're doing it to become better. And the reward is to get to this. Large, expansive core value, decreased vulnerability and coping mechanisms of improve, appreciate, connect, or protect.